Number 28, for each pair of standard free energy change and electron stoichiometry values below, calculate a corresponding standard cell potential. Okie dokie. So we have 12 kilojoules per mole and an N of 3. Now one of these has to be the standard free energy change, and the other one has to be the electron stoichiometry value. Well, let's start with the free energy change, right? A change in something is always a delta value. Free energy is Gibbs free energy, so this is a delta G value. Standard just means that I'm, I have a delta G notch. This notch in the upper right-hand corner of the degree sign just means that we're under standard conditions. Now just know that it's literally an energy value, so it has to have some uh, type of joule value attached to it. And this 12 kilojoules per mole has the energy value, the kilojoule, so I know that this is going to be the delta G, which means that the other one, the N of 3, has to be the, the electron stoichiometry value. But what does N of 3 actually mean? Well, remember when we were doing PV equals NRT, the N standed for moles. But now we're getting even more specific because we're talking about oxidation and reduction reactions. That's when you're searching for cell potentials. This is going to be the moles of electrons that are being transferred from who's ever being oxidized to whoever is being reduced. We don't know who it is. We just know that three electrons are going to be transferred. Now, from that information, we have to find out a standard cell potential. Cell potential is always a E cell value. And I'm searching for a standard one, so there's got to be a notch. So, what formula goes with E cell, delta G, and the moles of electrons? It's this formula right here. E cell equals the delta G value divided by N times F. Now, we know that the N is 3, and the delta G value is 12 kilojoules per mole. We want to find out that E cell. Now, just know that an E cell value is in volts, and if we translate this volts, another way of expressing volts is joules per coulomb. Uh-oh, that energy unit has to be the same. One can't be kilojoules and one can't be joules. So if I'm solving for volts and I need it to be in joules, I have to first convert this kilojoule value into joules. I'm going to leave the moles on the bottom, so it'd be just joules per mole. But remember, if you're going um, from kilojoules to joules, all you got to do is just times by 1,000. So this would be 12 and then three zeros after it. So now it's 12,000 joules. And that's the number that you're going to plug in here. Now, for the F value, Faraday's constant, they didn't tell us that, but it's a constant value. It's always going to be 96,485. The units here are going to be joule per coulomb. Is it joule per coulomb or is it coulomb per joule? It is not. That's what volt is. I don't know why I just wrote the same unit. Sorry about that, guys. Faraday's constant is coulomb per mole. Now it makes sense. And that's how your coulombs are basically going to be uh, put into the formula as well. So that's where the coulomb comes from. Let's just plug everything in. E cell equals, the negative is in there. And let's see, we have one number on the top, and then we have the two values on the bottom. We have the 12,000, and then we have 3, and then Faraday's constant, 96,500. Now, 96,500, if you wanted to round this, but I'm not going to. It's just kind of a habit. The E cell is, we could plug this all into the calculator at one shot. That's why I love the TI-84. So I say negative 12,000 divided by 3. And now if I'm not using parentheses and I still want that 96,485 in the denominator, I need to press divide again. If you press, press multiply, the calculator is going to think that 
this number is in the numerator. We don't want that. Let's press enter. And now, since we have two sig figs here, we should only have two sig figs. So negative 0 0.041, and that's volts. And there you go. There is the answer to the question. What do you think? I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Just gets the word out there that this YouTube service exists, that this educational content exists all over the world. We've got tons of comments from you guys from all over the world. Uh, it really is amazing that this, this, this channel is reaching to the ends of the earth, basically. Thank you so much, and I hope we're giving you great content. But anyway, you got to keep practice, practice, practice to get great at your subjects. And that's why we have like over five, maybe 5,000 videos. I think we're at, we're almost reaching 5,000 videos. And yeah, all for you guys. Thank you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.